good job for rolling out your mat. Unless you didn't roll out your mat and you're watching it from the couch right now. <laughs> but yeah, today's practice is to help you find your motivation. So we're gonna set your dials, we're gonna practice it over and over, and we're gonna actually wire it into your nervous system so that you can be successful in whatever the things are that you are feeling like you need to pick up your game on a little bit. Um, if you are watching it from the couch, you'll actually probably still get a lot from it because this, um, it, this one is chock full of tips and strategies and different ways to stay motivated and get motivated and just deal with the discomfort that comes with, with, with growth. The Eastern view of health, Ayurvedic view of health is that appetite is a really central part of it because of course if you don't have good digestion then it doesn't matter how healthy you eat it still rots in your gut and putrefies and it's and you can't get the nutrients from your food so having a strong appetite is um, one of the main goals of like a healthy lifestyle and I submit that the same is true of life that I think an important part of your mental health and your enjoyment of life is to keep stimulating your appetite for life so whatever those things are that you love but that are challenging to you go into those challenges because that's where you get the appetite you got to earn your appetite you got to work it up and it comes through a combination of restraint and hard work so let's get going on setting your dial so that you can do this in a way that removes the resistance where you're working together with yourself and working smarter not harder let's go so close your eyes and the very first thing that we got to do is get really clear on what it is that you want um, motivation for so if you feel like you need extra time definitely feel free to pause the video because the more clarity you have the more effective this will be. And we're gonna keep referring to this throughout the practice. So, get clear. While you're doing this, make sure you're breathing fully. <clears throat> and think of a particular representative thing, like a scenario that you often encounter with this, that you need to make sure you've practiced because this is a place where you often derail or maybe it's something you're intimidated about, um, something that's been very difficult for you to succeed at in the past. So even if you're like, I don't know, I just want motivation to like do a good job with my day, think about a specific part of that day that tends to not go that way you would like it to go. And, um, and practice right now in your mind Practice responding in that scenario the way that you would like to respond. And don't just see the emotions that you take, but also feel the emotions. Like, what does it feel like to respond the way you need to right now? This is the representative event that we're going to program into you during practice today so that you can have a successful thing to reference, both for this and for everything else that you're doing. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, keep that in your mind. We're going, to, we're going to ping this successful way of doing it as many times into your mind during practice as possible. Because the way yoga works is it actually programs your nervous system to respond in a certain ways. So a really powerful technique that I have used before with my yoga practice is if I'm working on a goal, I think of the successful version of that goal in each of the poses. And that way I'm wiring it into my system from a variety of angles. And that way when I get out there in life, it's already wired into me in a lot of different ways. So we're going to start with a really familiar motion. We're going to start with sun salutations. So you can even close your eyes if you want. We're going to do several rounds of these. And, um, and you're going to practice, practice the successful thing that you're going for right now. So go ahead and inhale, take your arms above your head. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank or jump to chaturanga, however you like to do it. Inhale, 
Exhale, chaturanga. Through to up dog. Back to down dog. And breathe. One thing that I have found to be very effective for motivation is a proper warm up. If I have in my mind like the ideal version, let's go ahead and bring it up. Hold on. Wait till the next down, next down dog, I'll tell you. <laughs> Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, take your arms above your head. Exhale, hands back to heart center. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank or jump to chaturanga. Inhale. Exhale. Through into up dog. Back into down dog. So what I was saying is if I have this plan in my head that I'm going to dive into the hardest part of something that I have not consistently succeeded at yet, and somehow I'm going to just be machine-like good at it, if I don't have a proper warm-up, then I'm like, oh my goodness, and I just psych myself out so much. I'm talking about in life too, not just in yoga. Keep breathing. Um, so whatever this is that you're wanting to succeed at, that's something that you can plan after class. Like how, let's go ahead and bring it up. How can you, <laughs> inhale, half lift, exhale, forward fold, inhale, bring it up, exhale, hands back to heart center. How can you warm up for what it is so that it's easier to get into? Pick it up again, inhale up, exhale, forward fold, inhale, half lift, exhale, step to plank, inhale, exhale, chaturanga, through into up dog. And back into down dog. And it's not even, it doesn't even, your warm up doesn't even have to be related to the thing. Like, my pre warm up for working out is just getting dressed, like, even down to doing my makeup. And that way it feels like, okay, that's easy, I can do it. But when I'm all dressed up like that, I'm like, well, I may as well do something productive at this point. And by then I'm like, okay, well, now I'll do the warm up for my workout. And then by the time I actually get to the hard part of my workout, I'm like, well, that's fine, because I, I gradually got here. And now I'm in the mood, and now I want to. And I do that with my work day, and I do that with whatever else I'm needing to be disciplined with. So keep breathing. And then bring your feet up to your hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand, take your arms above your head. Exhale, hands back to heart center. Inhale, take it up. So keep practicing. Exhale, forward fold, practice in your mind what you're wanting to do. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Through into up dog. Back into down dog. This time I won't talk so you can just practice. What, what might be your warm up activities for? For getting into this thing that you're trying to succeed at. Bring your feet up to your hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand. Take your arms above your head. Exhale, hands back to heart center. We'll do one more. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Through into up dog. Back into down dog. And breathe. Hmm. And then come on to your knees, sit back on your heels, inhale, and then exhale, take right knee to left, or right hand with left knee and take a twist. Stay open across your chest, look over your shoulder and breathe, so nice, tall, good posture supported with your core, and your breath, and then switch your sides, inhale. Exhale, breathe, 
nice and tall, open across the chest. And then come back to the middle and take your legs out in front of you. And inhale and exhale. And we're just going to pulse, keeping your breath. Belly button in, and now scoop. So it's okay if your back is curved. Straighten your spine, and now take your hands to either side. Inhale, and then exhale, slowly roll down, and Bring your hands behind your head. Well, oh, actually, no, not hands behind your head. <laughs> Lift your head and then breathe and switch your legs. So keep your belly button to your spine. I had a Pilates teacher one time say, pretend that you've got somebody like stitching your spine into the mat <laughs> so that you keep a nice flat back and I love that. So pretend your spine is quilted into the mat. <laughs> yeah, sure, I love that too. <laughs> Breathe. Keeping your focus on what it is that you want. Remember, each of these different motions programs it differently into your brain. Okay, so now a similar idea only. Now, um, your legs are straight. Breathe, so you can bring your feet to whatever, or your hands to whatever foot is at the top. But keep that spine <laughs> quilted into the mat. And breathe. And then bring it in, stretch it out nice and long. Oh, it feels so good, so refreshing. Keep your breath. You can stretch like this, even like, you know, I mean, you can be standing up with the same basic idea of what you're stretching anytime during the day. That kind of thing is refreshing. All right, let's do a little work with your inner thigh. So bring your foot up, you can come onto your toes, come down onto your elbow, and then um, we're going to pulse. And the idea here is to keep your leg nice and straight. The straightness of your leg definitely affects the effectiveness of the of the exercise. Um, you can experiment with flexing your foot or pointing your foot. Sometimes we're really particular about that. <laughs> the feet is actually a huge part of Pilates. Um, but for this particular exercise, it doesn't make a massive difference. And if you want to just kind of play with whether or not it makes a difference for you, you can to flex your toes or not. But while we're doing this though, um, keep picturing the thing it is that you want to succeed at. And picture the feeling of like, okay, I'm starting to get tired and I'm still going to keep going to succeed. Because that's a skill you're going to need. Okay. Switch your sides. While we're doing these, at any point with this stuff, if you're like, oh my goodness, I gotta drop out, that's perfectly okay. Um, stop if you need to stop. Like I say, the idea is that I kind of want to take you into a place where you get to that point where you're like, okay, already, I'm tired. Because if you're going for something challenging, keep your leg nice and straight. Like I said, the straightness of the leg is important for this one. Um, if you're going into something that's really challenging, you're going to encounter this feeling, so we need to practice that. What do you do in a situation like that? Do you just be like, oh, I'm just going to throw in the towel, like, mess up that little bit and so I'm just gonna like not even try now or is it like no um, I messed up that little bit and I'm just gonna pick it up next time and if I only hit half of the marks that I meant to try to hit well that's a whole lot better than none um, so just do what you can now and then rest if you need to um, and maybe just practice just a little bit like maybe try two reps more than like when you're like okay I need to be done two more reps that's it and then you can also practice that when you're out there doing whatever it is that you're wanting to do. And um, you already kind of dialed it into your brain. You didn't kind of, you did. You thoroughly dialed it into your brain. Okay. So 
bring it back up. Come on to your other side. And let's get the glutes going. All right. Okay, so come on to your side. Take your foot out to the side. And lift and lower. Keeping your breath. And um, yes, it is harder. Like the if it's over here, it's not as hard as like if it's up here. So um, you can kind of play with it or maybe even vary it up a little bit to different areas um, intentionally. And that way you can hit, obviously, <laughs> the glutes we want to develop from lots of angles. Makes them nice and round. <laughs> um, speaking of, let's do little circles. And again, I'm intentionally doing this where you might be like, okay, we need to be done. Be done if you need to be done. Um, if not, then keep toning your glutes and keep practicing. Like I say, practice whatever it is. Practice whatever it is you're dialing into your brain right now for success in other things. Should we do one more? Yeah, let's do one more thing. Just bend and straighten. We'll just do four of these. It's weird teaching on video, let's switch sides, because I can't see you. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like, is this getting to be too much, or are you good to go, or where are we on this? And I don't know, it's like, are you, have you been practicing yoga for the past 10 years, or did you just start like on quarantine? <laughs> so it's definitely interesting. It's fun though, the teaching on video, I like it. Okay, so same thing. And you can vary it up if you want to. Keep your support with your core. You're going up and down, just pulsing up and down. Keeping your breath. Staying relaxed through your shoulders. Um, the idea is that you're, I, I like to think of it as if the tension stops here, like that my core is the thing that's supporting everything. So there's really no need for my arms. It's almost as if my upper body could be oblivious to the fact that anything is even going on. It's not entirely oblivious, but you don't, I mean, it, there's really no way that it meaningfully contributes to the work here. So there's no reason for it to be tensing up. Go ahead and make your little circles and keep your breath. And maybe go back to, if you can, <laughs> go back to visualizing what it is that you're trying to succeed at. Or even just being in that feeling of like, you know what? Yes, I can be successful. And tuning into like, the harder it gets, tune into yourself even more. And then we'll do our four final things. Having said that, keep good form. And it's like that out there with whatever you're doing. If you're so tired where you're like, I can't, I absolutely cannot, or you're just completely cheating it to the point where it's like not doing you any good, stop. That's when it's time to rest. Okay, let's go ahead and take a little... Oh, that feels really good. Breathe. Also, the, the periods that are more restful, let's switch sides. Um, same thing when you're doing your thing. Really enjoy those periods that are more restful. And be very present during that rest. It kind of, like, going for goals and being motivated, It excuse me, it gets you out of um, doing too much social media and things like that because you're just like, I don't want to waste away this beautiful, precious rest time. I want to really be present with myself and enjoy it and, and celebrate it. And so you can even practice that during our practice today. All right, come down onto your back. We're going to do a little bit more with the glutes. <laughs> like I said, if you need to be done, you can be done. Um, yeah, so we're going to do um, bridge. And we're just going to pulse it. Keep your knees together. Parallel, obviously. Keep breathing. And then go up kind of nice and high. And squeeze your glutes right now. We don't do a lot of, like, glute stuff. Oh, hold on. <laughs> we don't do a lot of glute stuff in yoga. But... 
it is actually important, um, especially if you sit a lot, your glutes can atrophy just like anything else, and it, it actually makes it hard for your pelvis to be at the right angle, and then that, if your pelvis is tipping forward because your glutes are too weak, that can cause strain on your knees. So if you have knee problems, it could even be because you've got weak glutes, who knows? So let's just fix that. Um, let's do this one next. Come on to your toes. Same thing. And then come down and separate your feet to the outside, uh, the inside of your mat, but like at the edge. And then same thing, you're gonna lift and lower, really squeeze with your glutes. And one of my yoga teachers, she talks about the underbutt, <laughs> she calls it, and she talks about that being a really important muscle to squeeze in back bends, because it gives you, um, it gives you support and like I say, it, it brings your pelvis into a particular position, which helps with back bends. So you can be you can be strengthening that right now at the same time. So yeah, like I say, even though we don't often squeeze the glutes in yoga right now, we are going to. And then one more. Come on to your toes. Same thing on your toes. This just increases the range of motion. And you're on your toes. Three more. Last one. And you can be done. Stretch it out. Breathe. And then bring your opposite leg to your opposite knee and just stretch one of your legs like this. <laughs> Whichever one you want to start with. And breathe. I feel like I got something in my eye. <sighs> Enjoy. And switch your sides. and then go ahead and roll it up and come forward into down dog lift your right leg point your toe open your hip bend your knee and stretch if it feels good to straighten your leg you can if you want to bend your knee the important thing about this part is the angle of your hips so and your breath keeping your breath Whatever feels good while you're doing that. And then square your hips off. Put that foot down. Inhale. And switch your sides. And breathe. One thing you can think about is trying to keep equal weight on both your hands. Even though one hand, like in this case your right hand, is probably more apt to be taking more of the weight. Distribute that weight evenly on both hands. And also your foot. Your standing foot. <laughs> Keep your breath. Hmm. Square your hips up. Put that foot down. Lift your right leg. And oh, let's do the knee to your nose. And breathe. This is good because it helps with the step through. You can just kind of think of it like when you're stepping through that you're trying to approximate this as much as you can, this motion. And breathe. So lift when you're doing it. And breathe, put that foot down. And lift your right leg. Step through to a lunge. Stay up on your back toes and come to a standing lunge. <sighs> Breathe, and you can actually kind 
to feel the way the glutes help to get the pelvis more, like instead of tipping the pelvis forward, it, they help them get more like this. Think if you're squeezing like under <laughs> the under butt, under your butt, and notice how that kind of helps get your glutes in position. If you'd like, you can take your arms above your head and take a little, whoa, good night. <laughs> My Mississippi roots are coming through good night. <laughs> Step through to a downtown and breathe. I'm not from Mississippi, but my dad is, and so he like has some Mississippi that <laughs> Those things, man, it's really easy to pick up on that stuff. Let's go ahead and switch your sides. Let's step through with your with your left foot. Come up into a standing lunge. So before we before we do arms, squeeze the under butt. To get, and it's not so much, you're not so much concerned about the squeezing the glutes in this particular one, you're concerned about getting your hips in the right position. Right position being rather than tipping your hips forward, you're going to bring them up a little bit more. But I want you to feel that so that you can re recreate that in back bends and other scenarios where you want to squeeze like that. If you'd like, you can lift up and back and breathe. And then bring it through. Step to a down dog. Lift your right leg and step through. Turn your back foot and come up to warrior two. If you want to kind of warm up the joint a little bit. And again, like just get your hips in the right position. Because again, if your hips are tipping forward, you're not really getting a whole lot. Out. You're not getting nearly as much out of this pose. So get to where your hips are more level. And then breathe. This is a really good one to practice what I call removing the resistance. This is something that I, it's one of my like mantras for when I'm needing motivation for something. I just say remove the resistance, Jules. Like work with it. Don't resist it. And if you, if you work with this pose, you feel your feet on the ground. You, you're balanced from your, you know, like you're not all in your front quad. You're also putting some weight in your back leg. And you could hold this thing for a long, long time because you're in tune with it. You're not resisting it. And that's what you want to do. And then, we, ah, let's actually do this. Breathe. take it back. So all with that same really good base. Windmill down. That helps you be strong. And that's such a cool feeling when you're like disciplined about something that you're wanting to be disciplined about. And you're like, you know what? I didn't have to just cave under whatever. I can do it. That's kind of what we're doing here with this, this particular pose. Let's switch sides. Lift your left leg. And step through. Turn your back foot. Come to warrior two. Warm up the joint a bit. So when you're warming up the joint, it helps to get you like, see like this is with hips not in the right position. You see this a lot of times with beginners. So hips in the right position, it's more tucked. And if you start with your hips in the proper position, it's a whole lot easier to, to get them to be in the proper position all along. Okay. So let's settle into our warrior two. If it feels like all the work is happening in your front quad, put some of the weight also in your back foot by shifting, just think, your hips are one of the biggest bones in your body. So if you shift them even a little bit more towards your back foot, it's just, I mean, it's like you can't even tell visually looking at it, but you can tell as the one who's doing the pose. Um, then it, it changes the balance of the pose and then the pose is not so hard. Breathe. If you know the the three points in the foot or the four corners in the foot, however you want to hear it described. So ball of the foot of the big toe, ball of the foot of the little toe, and then the heel. Do that on both feet. That really helps get your hips in position as well. And breathe. And then take your elbow to your knee. Inhale up and over. Breathe. And bring it back and breathe. 
Windmill down. Nice solid base all the way through to the end. Step back to a down dog. And lift your right leg. Step through to a lunge. This time drop to your, your knee. And bring it up. Breathe. If you prefer and you'd rather do it as a variation, you can come down like this. hands to the mat, straighten your leg, flex your foot back at you, inhale and exhale, reach your head to your foot. If you actually, if you engage your quad, it helps to stretch your hamstring. Reason being is that the body responds better. It actually overrides the, like your muscles have a response that tell it to stop um, when it stretches just to make sure you don't get hurt. So when you engage the muscle of the opposite one, it helps to override that stop response because your, your body's like, oh, okay, she knows what she's doing. She's doing this on purpose. We're supported. And then come forward, hands to the mat. Step to down dog. Ah, breathe. Keep visualizing. The more you visualize that thing that we're programming into you, the more this programming is actually going to happen. So you get that thing in your head. And let's switch sides. <laughs> Lift your left leg. Step through to a lunge. Drop your foot. And you can either stay forward like this, or you can come up like this. Reach up and long. So this one you're actually supporting with more of the outside. Not so much the inner thigh, more the outer thigh. And kind of glutes. Keep breathing. And then bring it down. Straighten your leg. Flex your foot. Inhale. And exhale, reach. So you're engaging your quads. You're pulling, the tendency might be for this hip to go more forward, so pull it back. Think like you're pulling the femur into the socket, into your hip socket. And then visualize yourself doing your thing. And if you're like, ah, I don't feel like visualizing, that sounds like a hard work. That's kind of my point. It's not that hard, it's just like a little bit harder. And that's usually how it feels to do your thing. It's like, I could. It's just easier to sit on the couch and it's like, yeah but you want this thing. You'll be so glad if you just do it. And you're just gonna be kinda uncomfortable a lot of the time. If you're doing a goal that's, you know, worthwhile and hard, that's kinda just how it feels. Inhale, come forward into plank, and then take all the weight into your right hand, and come into side plank. If you need to modify, you can come onto your knees. If you wanna amplify, you can lift your leg, push into the floor so that you're not collapsing into your shoulders. Keep your breath. And then come back to the middle and switch to the other side. Remember your, whatever you did on the first side, do the same thing on this side. Keep your breath. If you're stacked, your shoulder is stacked on top of yours. That's a whole lot easier than if you're at some kind of weird angle with your arm. And then come back to the middle. Back to down dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. And slowly roll up. <sighs> Shoulders up, back and down. Belly button into your spine. Inhale, take your arms above your head. Lace your fingers, release your index fingers. Take a big step forward with your right foot. Inhale, and exhale, come into warrior three. You can modify by bringing your hands to heart center. You can take them out like airplane wings. Breathe. And then take it all the way forward into toppling tree. If that is too much for you, then come up and practice being in a straight line like this. So either do it like this, 
one extreme to the other or do it like this depending on your experience level and then you can also if you're more experienced you can try bringing both hands to your balancing foot and then bring it back arms by your sides palms facing front standing nice and tall take your breath Then step forward with your left foot, arms above your head. Inhale, exhale, forward into warrior three. Take whatever version of it you did the first time, keeping your breath. And then take it forward into either toppling tree, which you can have it with your hands to the floor. Like I say, if that's too much, then do it, uh, do it like this. And practice just keeping a straight line all the way from your toes to your, your fingertips. If you are in toppling tree, you can try taking your feet, I mean your hands to your ankle, keeping your breath. And if it's too much to do that, you can do like one hand to your ankle and then the other hand to your ankle. And then maybe try to just do it to where it's like one finger, <laughs> one finger on the floor. Go to bring it back. Step back to the back of your mat. things to work work up to keeping your breath oh man I feel like doing something but it probably requires a stress if you want to do gomakasana arms these things you can stop it real quick and um, you know what let's let's do it grab a towel if you need to um, I'm gonna go grab one <laughs> actually here I'm gonna use my my jacket um, so hold in one arm it's a little confusing with the jacket. Um, and then you can grab the other end in the other arm and then walk your hands closer if you need to. The full expression of it is to grab your hands. Keeping your breath. Mm, it feels really good. So open across your shoulders. <sighs> And then gently release, especially if it's kind of tight for you, and switch. The other thing to keep in mind is that you can um, you can use a hand, you can use one of your hands to guide the other one if you need to. So kind of like, hey hand, you want to come up a little further up my back like that, and then grab it. Otherwise, start with your prop, your your towel or whatever you need, or your jacket in your top hand, and then that way you can. Walk them closer to each other. Keeping your breath. And then gently release. And come to the back of your mat. Inhale up. Exhale forward, walk it out to a down dog. From here, lift your, uh, lift your right leg, step to the outside of your right hand, and come into lizard. You can stay on your back knee or come onto your back toes. You can stay, come onto your elbows or stay on your hands. Then just breathe and picture your thing again. This one and we're going to do pigeon next. These are both really good for visualizing goals that you're wanting to be um, accountable with because this it's just like a little bit uncomfortable. It's not crazy uncomfortable, but it's a little bit. And like we've said, that's kind of where you got to be. You got to be comfortable with that place of discomfort. And um, I'm going to step it back. You gotta be used to tuning into yourself when that happens, knowing that it will happen. And you can't just derail at the first sign of that. Let's switch your sides, lift your left leg and step to the outside. And that's a lot of what we're doing in yoga is you're programming yourself to have a different response to discomfort. And you really do find that it happens. You'll be out in the regular world 
in the real world. And you're like, wow, I'm not freaking out at this. I used This used to derail me and it's not anymore. Or I used to not be disciplined in this situation and I am now. When I first started yoga, that was the most unexpected benefit of that I just like, I had no idea that was gonna happen. Go ahead and step back. I just remember I was so productive. Like every day that I did yoga, I was crazy productive and I was like, what is going on? And self-discipline just, just wasn't an issue anymore because you're, because you are physically rewiring your brain to respond differently to that stuff. So let's do one. Let's do a pose that really packs a good um, amount of good goodness to that. And that is pigeon. So for pigeon, if you need some support in this one, you can use that same towel or coat or whatever it was that you were using. Um, you can put it under, under. Um, if you want to make it harder, you can bring your leg more parallel to the edge of the mat like this. But make sure that you get out of the pose before doing that. Don't yank your, don't yank yourself in like while you're like this. Don't yank it. So find your position. The, the important thing on this one is that your hips are straight. If you have knee issues at all. Don't do this. Do this on your back. This is definitely something where this is a wonderful pose, but you want to be responsible with your body in it. <laughs> so inhale and then exhale, come forward. And take this to a place that's challenging for you. So you're not definitely not about to hurt yourself or anything like that, but it's a little bit of a challenge because this one really teaches you to it rewires your nervous system to be okay with that discomfort. And breathe. Release. Visualize your, your success. Feel that feeling of being motivated in that moment where it's like, oh, okay, here we go, I got this. We're, we're going to do it this time. if you hit that moment where you're like, okay, can I get out now? Can I please be done? Specifically stay, like just stay. You're, you're fine. Unless you are like, if it's like your joint talking to you, that's, you know, that's not good. But if it's just uncomfortable, you've got to learn to stay in that place. You're okay. You can do it. Go ahead and take it out. Or bring it up. You're not someone who caves in at the first sign of discomfort and just can't handle any of that not who you are especially not when you're doing yoga okay so go ahead and let's just take a little back bend breathe you're actually gonna feel it probably more right here which is the idea that's more what we're going for in this one if you were here last if you took my class last week you heard about back bends the more you get your head involved the more you can get your upper back involved so really reach up and back with your head and then come forward and bend your back knee so we can get into your quads and breathe. Straighten your leg. Step to down dog. And walk it out. Lift your left leg. Step through. Take the pigeon on your other side. Inhale and exhale forward.
visualize your success. And if you're like, ah, ah, okay, fine. That's kind of how it feels. <laughs> like that's what you're gonna have to get used to is it's like, yeah, here it is again. <laughs> you gotta make that decision again to keep, keep going for it. That's just how it feels. But again, it's like, it's a little annoying. It's not out, out of line annoying. That's how it should be. Just a little, like, ugh, okay, I'll do it. Not crazy hard. If it's crazy, crazy hard, then dial it down a little bit so you can get it to within range. Go ahead and bring it up. One of the things I say is if I'm consistently not hitting a goal, I'm like, okay, well, you need to make it easier. And if I'm like, no, I don't want to make it easier, then I tell myself, okay, well, then be like succeed at it and when you can do it successfully like three days in a row or whatever two or five days or whatever then we can make it harder <laughs> go ahead and bring it forward i don't think i've ever actually <laughs> like if i needed if i i don't think i've ever made it too easy when i well i don't know maybe i have but anyway never mind <laughs> you know what i'm saying keep breathing reach up nice and long and tall Breathe, and then straighten your leg, hands to the mat, step to a down dog. Lift your right leg and step through to a lunge. We're going to do something to stimulate the appetite. So, as I said at the beginning, oh, here, I'll tell you to get into it and then I'll talk. Um, so bring the outside of your arm to your knee so that we're not really trying for a twist here. We're more going for a squeeze of the stomach. So do whatever you need to do to get that squeeze in your stomach and then breathe there. And what this does is while you're in the pose, it directs the blood flow, like it kind of cuts off some of the blood flow to your stomach. And that way when you release the pose, you, the blood comes flushing back in and it stimulates everything. There's actually a lot of, that happens a lot in yoga. There's lots of strategic binds and, and um, yeah, it directs the blood flow. It's really super cool. So breathe into it, even though you're like, ah, I feel like I kind of can't. You can. And then release. Step back. Ah, whoop. <laughs> Lift your left leg and step through and drop your knee. So, again, we're not really going for any kind of a stretch or a twist or anything like that. We're going for a squeeze. <sighs> Breathe into it there. Breathe into the squeeze. actually kind of good for your nervous system also to see that it's like oh I guess I can still breathe even though I'm squeezed that's an empowering feeling it's like that in twists too you're like I can't breathe my leg my lungs are like in a weird position it's like oh well, not really actually I guess I'm good and it's like that in life a lot of times oh no it's so hard I just I can't it's like but what if you can just try breathing and see if you can stay composed and stay present And then release and step back to down dog. Come onto your knees, come onto your belly. I just want to do one quick cobra. So I gaze to the front, hands by your chest. Inhale. Hmm. Get a nice stretch. Breathe. And then release, and take it into a child's pose. Bring it up nice and slow, nice and slow. 
Take your legs out in front of you. And come onto your back. Just lie here for a minute. Nothing fancy. Just letting everything be still and settled. Bring your knees to your chest and give them a squeeze. Hug your knees and give them a squeeze. And you can rock from right to left if you want. Maintaining that same idea of keeping your breath. And then we're gonna do another one for digestion with that same idea. So keep your right knee in. Extend your left leg out. And this one is not for your abs, so stay relaxed. Just let the mat totally support you. Stay relaxed through your abs. Squeeze your knee into, knee into your chest. And this does the same idea of it cuts off the blood flow to your ascending colon. So that when we release the pose, it will let blood, fresh blood pump in. So notice, you know what I said about the beginning about appetite being an important tenet of health in Ayurvedic philosophy. Um, it's, I really do think the same of life. And notice how in order to have an appetite, um, you gotta be tuned into yourself. You've gotta be, um, you've gotta do things in moderation. You've gotta work for it. You gotta work up an appetite. It's kinda like an appetite is earned. Keep your breath. Hard to work up an appetite sitting on the couch all day. <laughs> and go ahead and bring both knees in and squeeze it. And that same kind of thing happens about life. You know, I mean, if life is like, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's kind of feeling that way. It's like, well, have you have you challenged yourself recently? I mean, I'm not I'm not all like challenge yourself for the sake of challenging yourself. But I will say, I mean, when you go into challenge, there's so much treasure in there. There's so much reward. By the way, right now we are squeezing the, the transverse colon, the one that goes across, in case you wanted to know. But it's helping your digestion. But yeah, I mean, um, let's switch your sides. Challenge is, it's a good thing. Um, this is now your descending colon, <laughs> squeezing it. Um, so squeeze, you really wanna squeeze. Um, in the moment that you encounter the challenge, it's just like, ugh, I don't wanna deal with this. I don't want to do this, but if you will make the habit, if even even just hanging in with it for a little bit longer than you would normally have, if you can't bring yourself to just totally follow through, try following through for five seconds or thirty seconds, or just say I'm gonna I'm gonna like do it good. I'm gonna do a good job with this for the next five minutes or ten minutes, and then after that, let's say you're trying to eat well right now, and um, you're in a moment of temptation, and it's like. You can just tell yourself in 10 minutes, I'm gonna eat it if I still want it. But at least hold out for that 10 minutes because after a while, you'll get to where it's like, I can do 10 minutes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing 12 minutes. And then you'll get to where you do enough and you just see that it's like, I can do this, it's fine. No, I don't need it. But you don't have to go cold turkey from being like in your really bad habit to just suddenly being perfect at it. That takes a lot of self-discipline and that does not last very long. So just what I said at the beginning, remove the resistance and just say, I'm going to work with this. No, I want this. I want this. Like I want the success. <laughs> um, go ahead and release. Take it all out. Um, if you make a habit of that, you will. You'll work up an appetite for life. You'll work up an appetite for food. <laughs> you'll, um, you'll be proud of yourself at the end of the day. Go ahead and um, bend your knees. Lift your hips. Drop your knees to... Lift your hips and move them a little to the right, drop your knees to the left, and open your shoulders to the right, eye gaze goes to the right. And try to stack your knees on top of each other, and breathe. So what I'm saying for motivation is that it's twofold. Like, yeah, partially you can be motivated because it's like, well, wouldn't you love to have whatever it is that you're trying to work towards? But you can also be motivated because of what I just said, where it's like, and that's what makes life more vibrant and colorful. 
and um, there have been so many times, let's go ahead and switch sides, that I have gone into the challenge, so lift your hips, move them a little to the left, and switch, oh, hold on, I gotta scoot out, <laughs> um, drop your knees and open. There have been so many times that I have gone into the challenge and gotten like massive breakthrough on something that I like super want to break through on. And I never would have even known that that treasure was there unless I'd gone into the challenge. So in other words, like who knows how many treasures we walk right past every day because we're not willing to challenge ourselves enough to go grab them. And like I say, the thing that always strikes me in those situations is it's like, I never would have known this was here if I had copped out on myself. So it just makes me wonder how much I've missed out on. So you can use that in the moment of like, in a moment of temptation too. Instead of a moment of weakness, let it be a moment of strength. Breathe. Bring it back to the middle. We can't make discomfort go away. We can't make challenge go away. <laughs> I've tried. But like I say, we can reframe the way that we approach it. And you can, you can tune in instead of like freaking out when that happens and it's great. Okay, let's take Yogi's choice. You can do happy baby, you can do legs in the air, you can do shoulder stand. It's always nice to end with an inversion of some sort. So if you're open to the idea of shoulder stand, that's the one I recommend. But if shoulder stand is a bit much, then um, legs in the air is a good one. Or legs up the wall, if you're near a wall. Um, for shoulder stand, it's nice, like they call it shoulder stand and not neck stand. So get your shoulders underneath you a little bit like this. And that way you've got a base that you can actually like feel like they're, feel like stuff's on your shoulders. to your forehead. Slowly roll down, slowly lower your legs. If there's anything else you want to do, feel free. Otherwise, ah, settle in for a nice rest. And just enjoy. That's the beautiful thing. Rest feels amazing when you like, when you're proud of how you like, when you've done a good job with your day. You may stay resting as long as you like, or get up whenever you want. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. I'm used to saying thank you for sharing your presence and practice with us, and um, that's not applicable right now. <laughs> so thank you for thank you for showing up today, showing up for yourself, and I hope you have a wonderful productive, successful rest of your day. Until next time, namaste.